Hello, testing. One, two, three. Bless us RNG today. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we have a we have a chance of showing a couple new things if uh, RNG is on our side. If not, I mean we'll still be we'll still be chatting about some things here in just a moment, guys. Okay. Pilots, welcome to Everspace 2 Game Dev Edition. I'm your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. I am your servant, I am your guide through all things Everspace 2 related. Boys, am I excited for you today! I don't know what type of English that was, but I know that you know what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness! So, if you guys weren't here last week, if you weren't here last week, uh, basically, we um, <clears throat> we had to run the normal version of the game, the, the live version that all you guys have access to, because the bugs that we had were <clears throat> causing us a little duress, so we couldn't show that. But now we're back into the dev branch once again. So this version is, uh, it's got a couple new additions that we'll be showing and talking about today. Be nice and fun. And uh, yeah, should be a good time. We're also going to be covering just a couple little things that have been going on. Nothing crazy. Just kind of like some of our thoughts and ideas um, on the, you know, development side of things. Um, nothing should be too surprising, honestly. Uh, should all be fairly straightforward. Uh, but yeah, it'll be good. Oh my goodness. Look at all these happy little chatters as well. We got Kazaa, Flory, Chatoui, uh, Michael. Perfect. Medbed, welcome, welcome. Laserhead, buddy, Fontanot, Spoot Knight, Bearded Frog. Oh my gosh. So, so many returning viewers. I love you all so much. It's my pleasure to be here for you. All right. So, let's go ahead and load up our stream save. Yes, this is what we need. <laughs> oh, I prepared this correctly. And I believe we have saved. Uh, right in this spot where we had gathered our, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we, we got our last, uh, um, uh, spatial bypass. And now we can kind of go off and do whatever we want. Now, we do have a new mission to accomplish, uh, but it's a mission chain that is still being built out. So we're not going to be following that. You're not going to be seeing any of that. That's, that's for our eyes only, um, but we will be flying a bit around uh, the Kite Nebula, you know, Zarkov, Union, Cedo, kind of wherever, wherever we're feeling we want to go. I know that we haven't completed a lot of location challenges here. And by we haven't, I'm looking at this and seeing, oh, actually we kind of have, but still we're gonna be floating around here. At the very least, we can complete this side mission within the Kite Nebula. 
Uh, and then we'll be uh, discussing some of the upcoming elements uh, as well as showing some. The first one is right here on the screen right now. I'm just gonna hide my body. We see that the UI, we were talking about this last time, I believe it was referenced rectangles. And uh, yeah, so all of that's done here. You can see that the rectangles and the almost squares are now all nice, conveniently, uh, you know, symmetrical in their tripling right here in these lines. Then we have this big old branching thing at the bottom to help uh, string together all of your ship stats accordingly. So instead of having the special, the alt, and the passives all being in one, we decided to split those out since there's a lot there that needs to be digested and understood. And uh, so, you know, we're flying the Cyclone right now, the Vindicator, um, and we have Reanimator. You can read all of that right there. Obviously the ultimate. Then we also have the passives, which you can tell uh, what they are very directly. Um, the passives also include the specific ship's natural bonuses underneath the passives. This is also shown by the additional bonuses in their corresponding locations as well, because this doesn't have a whole bonus. It just has shield and armor. When you go to shield, you see that shield bonus 15, you see the armor bonus of 15, and then as well as currently equipped bonuses um, towards those values as well. Last but not least, we separate out handling and speed and the tractor beam so you know exactly what you have on those fields and a little description that should be more than obvious to describe what those are. Like handling, this includes your lateral thruster and inertia dampening strength. The more you have, the smoother your turning capabilities. We have speed, which is the maximum rate of directional movement while using your ship's thrusters. This does include lateral thrust movement. And finally, the track to beam range, which is very straightforward, especially if you've been getting your perks accordingly. This big old box at the bottom, this, these are the slots that you can allocate to your ship. All of these are under the ship stats, so this is dependent on what type of ship you have. But again, this is the number of slots you have for each one of these respective items. As such, this first bit, primary weapons, you can have two. This bit, secondary weapons, you can have one. This one, consumables, you can have four. This one, devices, you can have three. Last but not least, your cargo, this is how much you can store. And of course, as we are mousing over this, you can see all of those details listed out accordingly, as well as what's taking up those individual slots. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. New music? I don't know. I'm not actually sure if this is new music or not. We just keep adding more. We love it. No, this 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 was added in the, the last build. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's see. From here, um, a couple other things that are noteworthy that we're still working on, like the conditions track here. We're adding slowly adding details to those. Uh, maybe you guys have noticed some of that. I don't know if you have or not, actually. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it's a live build. <laughs> Our focus hasn't really been on describing conditions yet, but that will obviously come in time since it's important. Um, and, uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of refinement within the UI itself, uh, like whenever characters are talking, and we're also going to look at a couple of ancient puzzles, so you can kind of see some of the new UI in that, um, just to help distinguish things from one another. You know the drill. That's what UI is useful for, to help distinguish. So that's what we're going to do. Do handling tractor and speed show con contributors like attributes do? Um, at the moment, um, no, they don't, but I think that's in the plan. And if it's not Hans Christian, we should totally add that. Um, but yeah, so for example, let's see, do I have anything that has handling? No, I don't. We'll, we'll keep our eyes on something that adds like handling and we'll see what happens if we add it. But I, I think it should, if it doesn't, we'll add it. I'll just like straight up tell you that right now. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll definitely look at that in a moment or two. All right, we want to go to Immaculate Redemption. Cool. All 
All right. Hans Christian says, not yet, no. All right. But yeah, that is in the plans because like, obviously, you know, all things consistent, right? Which is why the UI is getting a similar visual effect. Um, of course, like with the shield and the armor, we have the armor bonus percentage, which I'm now blocking on the screen. Sorry about that. But you see the currently equipped, same thing when you hover over this, you see the currently equipped slots, right? Um, and then like with your attributes, you see what's your what bonuses you're getting from. Again, I'm directly in front of. You see all of that. So yeah, for consistency, we'd absolutely love to do that as well. It will be there, inevitably. Inevitably. Oh yeah, the music. I was so invested in talking about stuffs. Hmm. Redemption is probably my favorite new location. Oh, good. Then we're going straight there. Which shows boost speed? Um, hang on a second. I want to make sure. All right, so this speed. Maximum rate of directional movement while using your ship's thrustered. Uh, this is the maximum that you would be boosting. And that does look wonky. That value changed? Is that a bug? Is this a, is this a bug? That's probably a bug. Can I say Gero? Yeah, I can say Gero. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, so... As I just mentioned, like these are gonna have the modifiers that show how it's being adjusted and whatnot. Uh, yeah, just consider right now that this is just added and that we will have like items in there, ways that they're modifying these particular attributes be listed under them accordingly. So just right now it's not there. So yeah, this probably might look a little confusing. Yes, that's okay. This is the setup, this is the foundation and then it will be built on top of that. But yeah. Ooh. That so now we're at vessel containing the father burn note. Mm. I detect only one life sign. New UI? What are is they it? doing? Hi. The vessel is being bombarded with an unknown dark energy. This, I presume, is how the cult gains a hold over their new initiates. So this is how redeemers are made? Let's put a stop to this. So you can see that the dialogue text has also been updated. Um, character portraits kind of like come out of that little box in the left. And then we kind of did away with a little bit of the old UI because it seemed a little bit uh, like the gray coloration, right? Kind of blended in a way that we weren't super satisfied with. So we decided to kind of box that off literally a bit further to help bring the UI together. Taking a couple goods, nice. Heal up our drones, oh my gosh. It's a lot of damage. And then we'll start doing some puzzles in this area, as well as the, the convert will do that mission as well. Go, 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 go. Ah, oh, I, I missed. My alignment was imperfect. There we go. There we go, perfect, perfect. Checking the location around a little bit. It's been a hot minute since I've been in this site. Now, I think the UI for the ancient jars is also supposed to be updated. Igmar says, am I late? I'm late. Good evening, everyone. Oh, no, you're totally fine. But uh, little tweaks and whatnot, especially when we see, if we see, I should say, if we see um, the runes, the runes now have their own little unique uh, UI for them, as well as rune locations to plug them in. 
we'll get some more wreckage. Yes, repairing my drones. As he destroys one. Oh, gosh. Take some dark energy. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and bring our drones back. Uh, what's our focal point to do? Let's go after this guy. So, uh, using our ultimate, there's some, there's some people, I've been watching the streams that you guys have been doing. Um, I've noticed that some of you don't quite understand the full usefulness of the, um, the Vindicator's ult. So, it not only focuses shots at the target you have selected, but it also fills up your drones all the way back to six. Or five, if you only have five in your respective Vindicator ship. But it fills it all the way back up. Now, when the ultimate concludes, then however many drones you had prior to using the ultimate will be returned, except for one exception to that, which is if you have picked up any salvage during the course of the ultimate. So if the ultimate is going, wreckage. I keep saying salvage. Wreckage. So if you get some wreckage through the course of your ultimate, then it basically stacks one additional drone to remain whenever it concludes. And that's multiplicative. It's additive. Rather, it's additive. Excuse me. It's additive. So if you get, like, three salvage during the course of your ult, then you will gain three more drones whenever it concludes. And my drones are absolutely getting conquered by these power crystals, which do area of effect attacks. So hopefully this helps them out a little bit. Well, we're immediately gonna just uh, plop that on. It's good. All of our drones are now gone. So, Alec, I hope that you assist us in the best way possible. Oh, Alec's not even here. Oh, great. Great! Alec, where are you? There we go. That's a bit better. Get our drone buddies back. At least a couple of them. I like trying to get all my drones in one fell swoop. Because I feel like if you just try to get one drone back at a time, they die really quick. Especially, like, in the middle of combat, right? You either want to pick up uh, salvage or wreckage as fast as possible to keep them alive. Or you want to, like, convince yourself that they're all going to die anyway. And then after combat, pick up all the wreckage to bring them all back. <laughs> it's like the two different mindsets of a Vindicator player. <laughs> <laughs> At least the way that I approach it. <laughs> Alright, so we have an energy sphere dispenser here. Now, I don't know if we found the socket yet, but we do see that there is a secure container over there. So I'm just going to call it a hunch, and we're going to take this over there. Now, whenever you're holding an energy sphere, you do have infinite fire and energy. But you're also on a timer. We only had about seven more seconds to get that there, but we got it. We got a flak? All right. I might use the flak right now. Just make that process a little bit easier with their drones. Speaking of drones, I want to keep my drones active, so we're going to repair them on the fly. Good, good, good. Wonderful. We're going to go ahead and save our ultimate for a bit of a more intense situation, like, you know, multiple elites that we might engage with. Woo! Okay. Uh, also, does this have... Nope, it doesn't. But that is a way better cargo unit, so we'll take it. That's fine. 
So what conversation I've been missing while flying around thus far? Let's see. <laughs> Your ship is so strong now, I never use any alts or torpedoes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that can kind of be an effect of where the game is at right now. That's fair. That's fair. Wonder how hard it will be this time to acquire the ancient weapon, unless it's not in this one, as gameplay elements have changed significantly from the last game. Yeah, no, we've, we've changed a lot of elements, um, but we have been bringing back a lot of, you know, uh, the content of Everspace 1 back into Everspace 2, uh, some of which, like the Arc 9000, in a, in a different way, right? With some similar effects, though. So, um, ancient weapon? I mean, I don't know. That sounds pretty cool if it came back into the game, but I have a feeling if we were to do that, it would probably be done in a very unique capacity if, if we were to do that, simply based on the fact that um, that'd, be, that'd be too much power. That's just that's way too much power. <laughs> but yeah. So how has RNG been tweaked? Oh, no, the RNG hasn't so much been tweaked as to uh, as to any statements that I've previously made. It's more that we are relying on RNG to see if something special drops uh, through the course of the stream. So more combat, the better here. Because if something drops uh, and I have to pick it up and it's seen on the screen, I mean, I can't, I can't take that away. That's all. All right, drones are happy and healthy. This is looking good. Let's go ahead and focus down this elite redeemer. I I don't want to I don't want to mess around. These guys can be really rough drones. You need to All right, hang on a second. Hang on a second. EMP should make him a much easier target. Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. Kind of checking over our gear right quick to see. It's probably just better. Ooh, I do like the chance to disable, so we're we're gonna hang on to that. Um, just gonna just gonna clean up our inventory a little bit since it's uh it's been a minute. I don't think we cleaned up our inventory since last time. So yeah, we'll just uh swoop in and scrap a bunch of stuff. That looks much better. this crusader out of the way because sometimes his disabling missiles can be uh absolutely problematic oh and this base we're too close to this base oh, all my drones are gonna get savaged oh no oh this is this is not good let's see if we can uh virus the turrets that should help us out quite a bit Got two of them went Yeah, our, our drones are just getting torn asunder. I think I'm just gonna let the rest of them die out and then we'll pick up the salvage afterwards. If we don't die ourselves, that is. There are a lot of them. a spicy location so get our shields back up here in a moment we'll have another pass with our energy back in and of course we have this elite tracking us down Almost got him. We just got to get a couple. Nice. That feels good. All right. Um, we have three, three wreckages. All right, let's see what happens. At the very least, we can kind of draw fire away. Go 
shields are holding well enough, so yeah, I think that was the right move. Let's just salvage our drones and keep these three alive. Try to take out the rest. Well, the drones are very mean when they're all synced up like that. All right, there we go. So now the last three drones have some pretty decent health. Where's that last turret? I thought there was another turret shooting at us. Oh, all the way up here? How dare you? All right. Mean. Rude. All right, that's enough. That'll do it. Shield recharge is incredibly slow. I wonder if it's damaged or there is an uh, XC equipped. Actually, let's look. We have a Star Forge shield with a recharge speed of 125 with our... Oh, that's the problem right there. Uh, our output shield energy uh, is 59 energies per second. Uh, yikes. So even increasing that uh, by 125%, uh, not so great when your total shield is 1,473. <laughs> is there any news on when the game is coming to consoles? Uh, yeah, so whenever we hit the 1.0 uh, release, that is when it will be coming to console. That is when it will be coming to consoles. Which consoles? Well, we will be making those announcements accordingly when we have information to report. Very good. Very good. Let's see if we have... Nope, nope, nope. Uh, hmm, man. I just, I really need... I want, an, I want an energy core that probably focuses on shield instead on a ship like this. Because I feel like you're playing defense far more than you're doing anything. Oh, there's a tractor beam range here thing. So yeah, you can see the increase to the tractor beam, but it doesn't list what is adding to the tractor beam yet down below. That will be changed. That will be changed or added. I should say it should be added. It will be added, not changed so much as added. So you'll be able to see uh, what's uh, creating those modifiers. Also, let's just let's just take this. We're gonna hold on to that um, and then get rid of this. All right, cool. So there's a lot of stuff to do um, kind of around this site. Ooh, power unit HX1. We need that for Hive. Yes, we got exactly three. Yes, 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 yes. Could I have cheated this in for convenience? Probably, but we did it manually and it feels good. Oh my gosh. What does this do? You might ask. Well, now, because I'm a hoarder, I can just go like this and it sends these goods over to the home base. Just yeah, see you later. See you later. Sending it over. Play, oh, we got multiple items that we want to send at once. Okay, yeah, nope, no problem. We can send it all. Peace out. Beautiful. No longer hauling. Uh, holding slots in our cargo. Oh my gosh, so nice. So good, so pure. Mm. So now I can be a hoarder all over again. Now there's a lot of stuff going on here um, on this site, uh, but long story short, it's going to be similar connections of these energy sphere dispensers to their respective uh, sockets to open up the doors. We'll probably do a little bit of this, but I want to get back to the convert mission where we're supposed to be rescuing the father. Um, or we could go cause a fight with that Inquisitor. Actually, we'll, we're going to do this first. I feel like if we do the Inquisitor, we'll lose all our drones again. <laughs> Will it be coming to N64, you guys? Oh my gosh. All right. I recognize that by reading this out loud, I'm giving it attention. 
I love you all dearly. Thank you for being here in these community-centered streams that are for you so that you come in here, we can have a good time together, we can answer questions about development and show you stuff that's up and coming. It's always our delight. You guys make this experience possible and you guys make this experience fun. So thank you. You're great. <laughs> Don't stop being you. <laughs> All right, let's go wreck this place. Also, let's change our weaponry around because I, I want to just annihilate this. This is not a weapon I would recommend adding on the Vindicator, but for this particular sequence. Ceremony of the ancients. Okay, Doomer. <laughs> I really like our dialogue lines, by the way. <clears throat> All right. All right. Let's go around and destroy these crystals. are doing a nice job over here. It's great when there's not area of effect turrets blasting them down, huh? Whew. All right, so yeah, well now we'll get some some of these elements over here. We'll wrap those up. The writers know their memes. Oh yeah, I I, um, I quite like our writers. I I mean, based on based on the feedback we've been getting, a lot of you guys also seem to like the dialogue and the the voice work as well. Obviously, this isn't voice where it's text-to-speech, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it's been coming together pretty well. You know, every now and then we'll kind of look at a character and we go, wait, are we breaking character? Is this, does this feel right? Is this character being represented properly? And we'll kind of scratch our heads and say, yeah, or no. We'll change up some dialogue a little bit, you know. We'll see somebody post something very significant about a character on the forums. Not very frequently. It's uh, something that doesn't happen often, but yeah. I mean, note that you guys can absolutely critique this story if you want. I don't know if we'll do anything about it. But if you like what's going on or you don't like what's going on, let us know on the boards. Right. But yeah, in general, we're pretty happy with how it's been coming together. Pre pretty stinking happy. And we also, uh, like, double check our own lore. Um, because sometimes, you know, you get ahead of yourself. You're like, oh man, it'd be really cool if we lined up this thing after X amount of years to occur. And then it like all comes together in this one big old climactic sort of thing. And we're like, wait a second, but what about the events of the first game? Oh, <laughs> we think about that stuff. Don't you worry, don't you worry. But at the same time, you know, if you ever see something that feels like it's inconsistent, yeah, point it out, point it out. It's all part of the process here. All right, let's uh, sneak in here. Dang it! We lost it. Try again. Come on. Come here. Good, good. Did we miss do we miss our target market? Oh no, these are just for booms? I thought there was web in here. Did we remove that? Alright, we'll get the biomass from the spore. Look at that, isn't that cool? That seems new and different. Oh my goodness. It's like things are coming together. All right, here we go. Just had to go a little bit deeper. Ew. All right. Get this spore. Biomass and solar particles, excellent. 
still going in a little bit further. I guess we were locked onto a target. Uh, unlock, please. Oh, this is fun. There we go. So, fun fact, you can use any missile to break these. Doesn't necessarily have to be kinetic-based. That might change. Might. Let's go ahead and look in here. Was this exit just on the other side? I thought there was something else. Did I pass by the secret? Oh my gosh. Eric blind? Do we need a new emote? Am I looking in the wrong spot? Oh my gosh, I'm having a meltdown. I thought that this was, <laughs> I thought there was a secret here. Have I forgotten? Goodness gravy. Join us right now as Rockfish Games plays their game and they don't know what they're doing in their very own game. Oh my goodness. I thought that the secret was in there and now I'm like all turned around. Let's not, let's not talk about this, okay? It's fine. Shoot the Hydra, you goober. Oh wait, is it in the Hydra? Oh no, is it seriously? <laughs> Look guys, <laughs> can't win them all. The important thing to note is we had all these really cool little hidey holes that when you explore, you can find some neat little secrets. Thank you, Kazaa, for being smarter at the game than I freaking am. Um, so yeah, there we go. There's another one. Surely, surely it's not in here. Let's get out of this tunnel. Goodness gravy. <laughs> I've done all the secrets at least once in this game. The problem is some of them I've only done once. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Game's too big. We need to we need to shrink it. Let's just uh, scrap the rest of the story and just call it good. Yeah, guys, is that good? gosh <laughs> anyway so there's a lot of stuff that we can still do here um i don't know how much you guys want to see about all of this um i believe that this is going to uh one of these will give us an augment or an expansion rather a mainframe expansion why aren't you going in there huh? 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 Are you broken? Oh, it's a heat. It's re it's see how it's red, guys. We have visual indicators, so you don't have to look like an idiot when you're streaming the game. Man, I am two for two today. Woo! But no, we have different energy orbs. All right, we have different energy orbs that will enable different sockets. So here we have a heat sphere dispenser. See how even the text is different to help you not look like a fool. And it's red too. Oh my goodness. Now, instead of this giving you unlimited energy, this increases your damage while you're holding it. And there are other types of energies that you can find as well. One of which is more of like a defensive energy, it creates a shield around you when you're holding it, which can be nice depending on what type of situation you have to fly through and uh, uncover the details of the secret itself. But yeah. And these were not added in the Kite Nebula. These also exist in the other regions as well. So this, is not, this would not be the first time you would be seeing these. So we'll get a couple more of these before I uh, move to the next space. Wow, that shield generator is... Not taking any damage. All right. Very good. I think it's hitbox on the other side. Igmar, how's Christian? We need to swap these shield generators. They're on the wrong side. I can still cheese it. I think. Maybe? The world is it is there just a block on this one nailed it absolute perfection all right swift scatter gun prime zapper and a power core this is the big thing that we were looking for
gonna go ahead and drop this power core right here because I'm seeing that maybe in this tunnel we actually had a destructible. That's crazy. Man, I am having a day. You are correct. That's not the energy. Uh, that's the energy sphere socket. Uh, that's the energy sphere generator. I think it might. I think it's on the underside of this uh, to get the proper thing. Anyway, we're gonna finish this one up. Then we're going to move on because I want to keep trying to generate uh, more items. And then, of course, we can talk a little bit more about um, some other elements. Dark matter, redeemer, disciple. Good, good. You know, it's funny, in my playtesting uh, before the stream this week, I was doing a little bit more in Union, because Union's one of those places where, like, you can get lost in Union. You can spend a lot of time in Union. There's a lot of secrets there. And I was kind of, like, going through some of them to make sure I uh, could remember where all of those were at. Lo and behold, here I am. We're just, like, hovering around the uh, space in Kait Nebula. Now we need to find our... There it is, there it is. Our power core. Woo! You never know what to prepare for in a live stream, you know? <laughs> Are we ever going to be able to custom build our own ships? To a degree. To a degree. So, uh, the ships do have a modular uh, component, right? They can have different bodies, wings, engines, cockpits. And uh, through that, Wait, do we do we revert our indicators? Oh my goodness! I know that we had custom indicators for these. I know we had new custom indicators for these. I'm not even joking. We must have undid that. That was probably something that was breaking the systems. Is my guess. But uh, new UI will be coming, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! The final one here. This should look somewhat similar to Everspace One Veterans. Gold! Oh, let's see. Ah, uh, Swift Scattergun. That might actually be a good idea. Actually, I like those stats. Corrosion, slow target. I think we're gonna swap to that for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this. Let's use webbing instead of EMPing, so that way we can, if we have, we are using our EMP device, so we could web and EMP if we needed to. That way we don't have any uh, crossover. Blaster could be good, but not as ideal for this ship. I mean, the scatter gun isn't ideal for this ship, but you know. Um, beam laser. If only we had a more powerful beam laser. That level 19 common is just uh, not quite what we're looking for. Nah. All right, this might look strange, but I'm actually gonna swap this out because I want that increased energy. No, that's not that good though. Ah, gosh, dang it. Man, everything is so, everything is so close, but it's just not quite good enough. We need to find, we need to find like a huge improvement somewhere to help start carrying a little bit more. Uh, precision and utility could be good, but I like the track beam range. Shield breaker missile, no thanks. We'll hang on to you to continue questioning its usage. I'm gonna get rid of the flak, sorry, Michael. Um, and auto cannon, I think, has outlived its its prime. No, actually, I'm a liar. We're gonna hang on to that as well. All right. All right. Now we need to fly on out of here. And our ship that can barely fit. Good, good, good. And restore some of our drones. Nice. <laughs> I like gold. Yeah, we need to we need to send stuff too. That reminds me. 
send stuff back to the home base that I don't have any use for whatsoever until later. Cool. So we have more secrets and stuff in this area. Um, I feel like I've been here for a while. Let's just go ahead and take on this Elite Redeemer Inquisitor with our new Swift Scatter Gun. See how it works, see how it operates. We'll keep going from there. Just got here, what did I miss? Oh, we just talking about a little bit of UI things than me being an absolute doofus. Uh, no worries. <laughs> But yeah, we can cover some of the new UI changes that have been implemented. And a couple that will be that um, I guess we had to pull back out for some sort of reason or another. I do like how fast I can use this to get the maximum damage output. But, uh, still takes a little bit of time. Yeah, the text... At the bottom of the screen, whenever a character's talking, that's all been revamped accordingly. A couple more fighters, we'll take them on and then we will skedaddle and move to our next location. You want to be able to build a class of ship from parts? Uh, so the way that the system works, let me just um, pause like this. So the way that the craftable system will inevitably work is that whenever you go into your ship customization, you will be able to choose from a selection of wings. All of those wing types, wing types are bound by the class of ship. So all the Vindicator class ships will have four distinct wing types, and then each of those wing types will have four distinct tiers. There will be nine different body types. The body is uh, everything you see from the cockpit all the way back to about this point, I would say. Uh, but it can also be like everything up from like this line all the way over to that line, because that's where the wings I start, uh, at least on the Vindicator, start changing. And then the engines can span all the way from the entirety of the left and right wings to just like this little tiny spot on the back. Um, and you'll be able to pick and choose those to create uh, your specific look for that class. That's how that's going to uh, be operating. But you're not going to be able to like mix and match and be like, I want to use this gunship with these scouts engines and this interceptor's cockpit. Like you're not going to be able to do that. And then I looked at YouTube chat. You missed the announcement of Everspace 2 coming into N64. Gosh, gosh dang it. <laughs> the Vindicator, this Vindicator looks a lot like a Sentinel. Yeah, it's got some similarities. Yeah, they both have the forward swept wings, right? Uh, except this guy is a chunk in comparison to the, Vindic uh, the, the Sentinel. Uh, but yeah, you're right. They do have a similar-ish look. And that's, I mean, that's the nature of some of the wing types. Like, there's also a couple interceptors that look like uh, the Sentinel as well. Or, yeah. Or is it the, is it the Vanguard that looks like a, whatever. There's, there's a couple other wing types outside of their classes that have some similarities. Um, when you see more variety in the Vindicators, I think you'll see very clearly how distinct they are from, like, something like the Sentinel. That's just something we need to get in the game for me to show you, because you don't have to take my word for it. We'll, we'll, it'll eventually be there. You can decide for yourself if I'm, if I'm lying or if I'm trying too hard. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the way our concept art looks in that regard. And Matthias, who's our 3D wizard for the player ships, I think I really do think he's been doing such a fantastic job bringing it all together making sure all the different types are cohesive so that they're interchangeable. Man, getting all our drones back, this feels great. The thermo gun. No, compare with the pulse laser. I 
I do like the regenerate whole hit points with each kill. It's only a 10% chance, but uh, I feel like this ship kind of needs every little uh, assistance it can get. Plus, this has a good fire rate. A 10% chance with 12 shots fired in a second. I'm no math major, but that means there's at least one chance of a hit in every second. Oh, Igmar, um, the Immaculate Redemption? Are you, you need like the map view? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, sorry about that. I missed, I missed that bit of the chat. Don't mind us, folks. We're just, you know, uh, doing some development during the course of the live stream. <laughs> That's how live and revealing these streams are. Oh my gosh. You gotta like all that pre-recorded footage where like, oh yeah, all this stuff is like, you know, when it's it's set up and I don't know what could happen. Oh wow, what a convenience does this thing happen? Blah blah. Nah, that ain't that ain't us. Instead, you get, oh my gosh, guys, I'm a freaking idiot. I forgot how to do this puzzle. Oh man, that shield generator is broken. It's backwards. Guess we're gonna have to fix that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, it's great. Bleeding edge development here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh gosh. But I'm glad you guys are with us as we're showing this stuff. Because, I mean, obviously we're excited to. That's why we're showing it in the first place. But um, also we feel it pretty necessary to engage with you guys and uh, make sure you know what's going on. So it's kind of a it's kind of a win-win. Work never stops. That is way too true of a statement. <laughs> I'm on your father's trail. The Redeemers have performed some kind of ritual on him. Oh no, I hope we are not too late. <laughs> oh, that text to speech is so bad. Cannot wait for that to have some level of emotion. Oh no, I hope we're not too late. Is there Ooh. anything else that you can Ooh. tell me about these jerks that might help me in any way? They were once scientists themselves. Research department for extinct extraterrestrial monuments, redeemers. Okay, well that might at least explain why their vocabulary range is better than that of the average outlaw. Alright, so uh, Boogie asking, will there be wider variety of weapons to find in space as opposed to gimbaled and locked? Like for instance, auto fire weapons with reduced damage, turn your ship into a capital frigate. So we don't really have um, like turret weapons uh, in the plan. like. The turret is a unique ability of the gunship, right? The ultimate, in fact, where it's basically a weapon that can fire any direction, any time, lock on wherever. Um, as opposed to the weapon read that we want you to be using in a skillful degree or capacity, you have to do the work to aim, you know, lead your target and fire. Now, obviously there's a difference between um, hit scan um, and projectile based weapons. But there are more variety of weapons in that sense coming to the table as well. Um, also, uh, we of course have the difference between the single fire weapon and the synced fire weapons. I'm gonna call them synced. Uh, so a uh, single fire is each hard point fires after another, right? So again, we're gonna use the gunship as a reference point because it's relevant here. And it's also something that we had to patch. We had to fix it. Um, so the gunship, because it has twice as many hard points, it effectively fires twice as fast. So uh, for example, let's just say that the thermo gun uh, with its, well, actually we can look directly here. The fire rate, 12 shots per second. That means each gun can fire six times in a second, right? Each hard point fires six times in a second. On the gunship, each hard point still fires at six times per second, but because there's four of them, you've effectively doubled your fire rate because now six times per second, four times, now you're getting 24 shots in a second, right? As opposed to any of the other ships, which only have two hard points and they get 12 shots per second. But this is different from uh, a synchronized shot like the scatter gun, actually. Um, the scatter gun, because it's shooting all at once from each hard point, um, that means that instead of like each one going like boom, 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 now you got boom, boom, right? And it, 
then you also have the difference between a charge up shot versus a, um, uh, uh, oh my gosh, the naming convention. Hans Christian talked to me about this the other day and I've already for freaking forgotten it. Uh, but it's the difference between like, you have to charge versus like, it's, it's like a sustained firing, right? Like maybe it's just sustained. <laughs> Terms are escaping me today. And whenever you have these different types of weapons, now you're starting to create these different inter interesting like combinations of firing. Cause then again, when you're putting this on a gunship, once again, once again with the gunship, a swift scatter gun, you know, it's firing twice at the same time. Now it's firing four times at the same time. So it's effectively doubling its damage, right? So you have the thermo gun and the single hard point firing weapons uh, on any of the other ships, you know, they're firing one after another and then the gunship doubles the rate of fire and then you have your synced fire hard points. <laughs> the gunship effectively doubles the damage in one succinct shot. Goodness gravy. Um, in the current build that you guys have access to, not only does the weapon get doubled in strength, uh, whenever it's a synced fired weapon, but it also doubles the fire rate. That's a bug. <laughs> That's a bug. So right now you can absolutely destroy everything way too quickly in the gunship uh, because not only do you do double damage, but you also have double attack speed. Uh, I'll actually show you guys a screenshot um, of Kazaa, who's in the chat right now. He actually uh, captures the use of a synchro pulse. That's the name of the weapon. Uh, firing on the gunship and you can just see how fast absurdly fast it is uh yeah definitely definitely a bu definitely a bug definitely a problem so uh that will be fixed <laughs> so yeah but otherwise um all that talk about freaking uh, uh fire rates uh, hard points and all that type of stuff uh we still have a couple more items and uh, ideas in mind for weaponry uh to change things up but we don't want to get too, super extreme outside of that. Like we're not looking to have like 50 different variety of types of fire, right? Um, that's just a little bit too extreme. Like we want there to be some consolidation so that you guys can mix and match accordingly while also having some experimentation and fun to do so. Burst is the term I was looking for. Burst, burst is the term. All right. Other is already in the station hangar. All right, let's destroy let's some more redeemers. Before this goes any further. Can we have a baseball gun? No, but thank you for asking. This is done impinging on our business. <laughs> Finally, someone a little less in the Let's try it off. Remember with a scientist or not. Oh man, this thermo gun. Okay. There's no one of that name. Maybe I need to be a little bit more clear in my shots. It doesn't seem to want to hit the target very well. well There we go, much better. All right, let's go get these guys and then we'll go over there, even though our drones are probably dying. Wow, all of those shots missed, are you, are you serious? A little bit better. It's almost like we need a modifier to make the thermogon hit a little bit better. If we could take out some more guys over here space jelly gun guys oh my gosh <laughs> you know i will say if you if you guys are honestly thinking about clever ways to like incorporate an item do so on the forums like we have, we have legitimately cataloged 
item ideas for weapons and modules. So, uh, do that. You never know. One of your ideas might sneak its way into the game. Now, I also do want to be clear that we have a lot of our ideas ironed out and a lot of what's coming is already in the plans, but you never know. You never know. Somebody out there might just absolutely amaze us and we're like, that's exactly what we need, and boom. In comes your idea. How neat would that be? All right, we got this last guy to take out. Pretty sure that we don't have to aim this thermal gun very well at this guy. That's well, Christian. <laughs> This is why every time we create a dev branch, we don't immediately push it to Steam because we might freaking break everything. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Apparently we've messed up the damage of the Thermogon and where it's particularly hitting the Inquisitor. Rest assured, this is not uh, happening in the way, uh, this is not, this isn't supposed to be how it happens. All right. This isn't supposed to be how this happens at all. Oh my gosh. Don't you love early access and live streams? Freaking. I, like, I know there's somebody that's watching right now who's brought a friend along. Like, hey, come watch these developers over this game that I think is super cool. I think you'll love it. All right, let's see what they got here. Let's, uh, let's, uh... Oh my gosh, this guy's a complete nerd. Everything about their game is broken. What the heck is this garbage? Well, it gets better. It it just, uh, he's, they're insightful. <laughs> what is this crap? Ugh, all early access titles are the same. Okay, well, we're not getting that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Every dev who is watching is going, been there way too many times. Amen to that. Oh my gosh. Every single dev at all are like, man, geez. <laughs> Woo! Hit some right in the fields. Let me tell you what. Is there a random hitbox left over? Oh my gosh. Guys, it gets better. Is this better? Is this worse? I don't know. I'm now having fun with the number of issues that are occurring. Oh my gosh. If you pick the fight. All right, we're out. We're out. <laughs> Stop breaking your own game. I know. How dare we? How dare we? <laughs> Woo. I hope you guys are having fun here. Oh my gosh. I don't mind looking like a little bit of an idiot. We know that we gotta iron some details out. The important part to know is that we are, and we will be. We will surrender. It's all good. You seek. Finally, some reason from you lot. He is but one of many among our collective. He can be relinquished in order to ensure the continuation of our great work. Okay, prepare to hand him over. Imogen, I have secured your father's release. Good. The jump gate for extraction. I'm already nearby. I've been watching events from a safe distance. I thought I told you to stay put. Listen up, you crazed loons. This lady is approaching your dog. Allow her to collect her father, or expect consequences. We will not interfere. Go on in, Imogen. The dock is over here, by the way. You can, you can fly in here. Unconscious. Oh, Papa, I know you can hear me. Hang on in there. We had a we had somebody uh, we had a couple individuals find some screenshots in here, uh, but some fun little details. These, there's doors, there's windows, there's like these canisters hanging out. Um, this is a uh, like we've got where, where's the where's the little ladder? Oh my gosh, where's the ladder? I can't even I can't remember where stuff's at. Oh here here we go. Look at this look at this little itty bitty guy. Oh my gosh, look at this. Do you know that this was in here? 
Look at this little ladder machine. We got a little tiny console or somebody to stand. Just to bring the goods over here to set them down. Look at this. This is crazy. Look, we even have like an art piece in the corner, like just hanging out. How many of you guys knew this was here, huh? The most detailed room in the game? Not quite, actually. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of stuff. Look, we got this little triggerable thing. Oh, we need to push that button. Like, there, look at all these. Did we need to do this? No. Why did we? Because we're crazy. His eyes. Oh my gosh. No. no. Do you have anywhere to go? I can bring him to his colleagues. They will find a way to help him. There we Among go. Them are some of the best neurophysicists <clears throat> in the cluster. Imogen. Take your father there and never come back to this place. I fear they might have a hold on him that he may never escape. There must be a way I can repay you. No, there is not. Just let me know later how you got on. I will be in touch. Thank you. Alright, so uh, that mission's now wrapped up, so we can kind of start free, fl free flowing wherever we want to go. We also hit level 20. That feels real good, so we get our ult perk. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and choose one of those. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the game or whatever. <clears throat> Currently available for play. More is coming, we promise. Oh, don't go in there. Don't fly my drones through there. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it, drones. Are we good? Okay, good. Area of effect damage to drones is absolutely brutal. All right, so let's go ahead and head on over to Adam where we're gonna choose a new level 20 perk. We've got ulterior motive, all generation while shield is depleted. We could be cheeky and remove our shield. We had a, a viewer, one of our, I always call him a tester, dedicated tester in our community, try this. And it actually has some pretty cool uh, traits about it. He felt that it was a bit overpowered. I tried it myself and felt that, no, it's actually in a good spot. You are, you're trading your defenses for offense if you wanted to go that route. You can completely remove your shield and that can uh, do a lot. That can, It could be crazy. It could be crazy. You can do that. Go for it. It's a little challenging, but is a lot of fun. I will, I will absolutely admit that. Um, I actually like using the unyielding assault um, because I kind of forget to use my ult. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. I'm just like so focused in the materials that I'm used to like, oh, this weapon, that secondary. Oh, I've got my device to use. And it's like the ult almost becomes like this sort of elusive concept. But when I pair it with unyielding assault, then I'm like, oh shoot, uh, my armor is like going down. I'm in the middle of combat. I'll use my ult to gain a big bonus to my attack or whatever, whatever ult I'm using. And I'll also get a free heal. So it's like a, it's like a win-win for me. I do think critical critical faculty also uh, has some interesting uh, traits about it. One of the most important thing about critical faculty faculty that I think a couple of you guys have missed. That's right. I watch you in your streams every now and then. One of the things that you guys are missing is that this is one of the only ways to generate alt without getting a kill. I'll say it again. This is one of the only ways to generate alt without getting a kill. Generally speaking, the enemy has to be destroyed, which gives you a chunk of your ultimate to you. But here with critical faculty, you don't need to get that kill. You don't need to get the kill. It, it procs when you get a critical hit. Not every time, 30% chance, but it, it procs from critical hits. So now if you're fighting like a big old target, say an inquisitor, and your ult's almost there, but there's no other enemies around, you're like, well, dang it, I, I'm not gonna be able to use my ult. Well, if you have critical faculty, guess what? You get a couple of shots on him, you get his shields drain, all of a sudden, boom, your ult ticks, he's freaking done. So it can d absolutely do not forget about that trait of this ult right here, of this passive right here. It's a very good one. I'm just not using it because of my own play style. Not necessarily, like, each one has its own sort of impact for you. So uh, keep that in mind. But yeah, critical faculty. Only way to generate alt without getting a kill. All right. Uh, aside from that, uh, did we get any other... 
things that I wanted to use. Oh, hello there. Yeah, that's that's great. That's pretty great. We lost firepower. Not a crazy important thing. I say that, and it's important. But <clears throat> uh, I do like the precision, utility, and resistance uh, to compensate. Uh, let's see. I really don't want to be up close in combat in these in these battles. Um, so much so that I'm thinking about swapping out the scatter gun, or I might just craft the new weapon. Um, It's just better. Why don't we have that equipped? Okay. And... Yeah, we're going to go ahead and just scrap those. And then move some more goods over to the home base for storage. Because I do that a lot. Because I am a hoarder. And it will take these out. I'm just... I'm going to get rid of this. Um... I should probably use the flak. I'm gonna go back to the auto cannon for now. We're gonna go back to the auto cannon for now. I'll get rid of the scout again. All right. There we go. Nice and clean. Oh, that's tempting. Oh, that's tempting. So the the big thing that we're looking at here is the speed word is a very good shield but it only recharges while you're boosting. That's the trade-off. That's the trade-off, that sneaky little trade-off. That's a good shield. I mean, Vindicator, you're running away a lot of times, so it kind of checks out. <laughs> All right, let me see if I missed anything. Uh... I'll pick Unyielding Assault as it can still be a lifesaver if, you, if uh, you can avoid damage for a few seconds to regen shields, yeah. Any ideas on space storms that can trap a player until an objective is met, like an invisible enemy? I think I remember something like that in the first game, cloud storms that mess and jam equipment. Uh, yeah, so uh, we could have like a uh, the dark plasma field, uh, which it only generates in sector five and six on Everspace One, uh, where you also have a jump suppressor there. So you have to navigate around darkness uh, uh, in order to uh, find the jump suppressor and then jump out. And if there's also a black hole in the area, yikes. But yeah, um, we do have some ideas and some concepts pertaining to um, environmental effects for the future of Everspace 2. Uh, when we get to a part where we can show what those look like, I believe is when we will be talking more about them. Because I think it's really easy to share ideas, but that's that's not why are these streams, right? Like you wanna see the stuff and we recognize that. So when we get there, we'll definitely have stuff to show. Uh, Cause let me tell you what, you know, once we got Kite Nebula out the door. We started working on the next content packages for you guys. Um, you know, that stuff that we've been alluding to in, uh, in the spring of 2022. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So, uh, more teases in the future, I know. I know. There's a lot to look forward to. I'm going to swap to the speed word. This might not be my best... My, my, my smart play, but we're gonna do it anyway. And I'm gonna leave this shipwreck alone because I, I don't wanna lose my drones. If I was in any other ship, I would probably fly uh, into that mess. I just don't wanna hurt the Vindicator. Uh, let's see, is there anything else we want to do in the Kite Nebula before we move along? Oh shoot, what we need is the location scanner. Oh my gosh, this also is power unit HX1s? We spin them on the hive instead? How dare we? Okay. So maybe what the play is to go back to base to see if we have any HX1s. Woo! Oh man. We gotta go into the nebula a little bit deeper into the nebula so that we can get to the um, spatial bypass. That's how we're gonna get back to the home base. I have decreed. Ooh. Ooh. 
I'd want to give the speed word a serious try if I could get the eco raid booster, yeah. No, there's some there's some clever little combinations you can use. Um, like Vanguard, I find, is a very good ship for the speed word uh, because you can uh, supercharge it, right? It feels it feels really good in conjunction uh, with with the Vanguard. But there are absolutely ways to tweak and modify those systems to work with other ships as well. Absolutely. So spatial bypass, let's head back to the home base, travel here. Oh, come on, the animation's not working either? Game dev. Yeah, there it is. Woo. This always plays havoc on my geolocationary sensors. You'll get used to it. Hi. Excellent. So let's go into the home base. Look at our items. See what we can do with our perks. Uh, yes. <sighs> really? We don't have any? I am lay sad. All right. Let's see if we can get other perks. Uh, let's see. Hanger size. We can top off the storage size, which is always a, a plus. I do like more storage size. But we're not going to worry about Elec for now. I've got Delia energy orbs. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we're, we're just going to, we're not going to worry about, we're not going to worry about anything else, I guess. We're just going to be looking for that location scanner. Uh, and we'll just call it good from there. Oof. All right. Uh, did I miss a question? I'm trying to see what's going on here. Eric is always watching. True to a point. <laughs> that shipwreck gets you a color, doesn't it? It might. It might. There are key locations that will generate colors for you, like 100% guaranteed. Uh, because, you know, the distribution of colors can be a little slow at times. There are other little tricks that we're using to uh, kind of alleviate some of that RNG pain, if you will. Uh, and we're also not done with it either. Uh, let's see. How dare I not worry about Alec? I know, right? Such a savage. Oh, you know what? I don't think I've unlocked Alec to fly in to help us yet. That's probably why he hasn't flown in to help us yet. <clears throat> Teleport visualization was done so well. Props for all the little details that enhance the game. Hey, thank you so much. Maybe uh, next stream they'll be working on both sides. <laughs> but no, seriously, I do appreciate that. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun with the visuals. Having a lot of fun with the visuals. Uh, when's the next major update planned? Um, so two things. The first thing is, I don't actually know. Uh, this is something that Michael is ironing out. Um, uh, but my guess, my guess, like legitimately just being on your guys' side here, if I were to guess, based on our release schedule of every three months, and then also recognizing that we, uh, you know, we ironed out some details, ironed out some plans, and locked in... Uh, an additional year of development, right? That kind of changes some things around. Now, a three-month cycle to drop a load of content for you guys, uh, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot. If there's other developers watching, they'll be like, man, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, entire new worlds to explore. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty hefty, uh, short amount of time in order to deliver those goods. So with where we're at currently to the next update, I'm going to guess and say, be a bit out from three months from now um it's gonna be more in that spring area uh is my guess oh my michael just responded and he said the next update is scheduled for spring 2022 okay thank thanks michael <laughs> that's why I, I was guessing that i was pretty pretty decently sure of that but uh there you go that's when the next update is gonna drop boom uh and there's gonna be there's gonna be a bit of i no, i'm not gonna say anything i'm not gonna say anything Spring 2022. We have a lot more to share in regards to what that is going to look like, but we're not sharing all the bells and whistles. Not yet. All right, there we go. Thank you, Michael, for just adding the clarity instead of listening to me ramble. <laughs> you guys have built a wicked 3D space library. Yeah, we're pretty happy with the variety of content in the game thus far. More's coming. Mm. 
Even more is on the way. Pick up these Atheum Crystal Shards, and then we're going to fly out and uh, probably complete a couple more side missions. Um, really going to be looking for those items. Okay, we've seen this bug. Don't worry about this. This will be fixed. I think we saw this somewhere else, didn't we, Igmar? This is at another location. But yeah, um, we. so basically, one of the, one of the things that happens here... Uh, believe it or not, when you leave a location that has resources that generate in it, after I think it's it's like 10 minutes or, or some prescribed amount of time, when you come back to it, resources will regenerate, okay? Mineable resources will regenerate. Um, and the effect in the future is that you'll be able to go to specific locations on the world map to gain specific resources. This is going to be a thing. And then you'll have like specific trade lanes where you can go to stations that are looking for specific things so you can make a profit if you wanted to start kind of going in that style of direction. These are plans for the future, not currently implemented. Um, but at the moment we have some of this generation whenever resources spawn in the area, like the Atheum Crystal Shard, it's meant to spawn somewhere within the Crystal Shard area at these sites, right? And one of the spots that it can unfortunately generate is right underneath these large crystals where you can't reach it. That will be fixed. We're gonna basically add a blocker to this so it can't generate under the large crystals. That's, yeah, that's the long and the short of it. And we, we, like I said, we have seen that report from a couple other locations as well. So just something that's on our list. Oh, it's Tia's. It was Tia's. I thought it was you, Igmar. For some reason, man, I got, I'm all confused. <laughs> Everyone gets to have one confusion day and today is my day. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, we're gonna move this stuff to storage uh, and then we are gonna get out of here. Oh my God. We're gonna kind of jump around. Uh, let's see, I think I wanna go back to Union for a number of side missions. Yeah, we could do data fishing. That wouldn't be so bad. So let's head on over to Prescott Starbase. What about Codex? No, last time I said Codex, it's pretty pretty for sure not happening. It's still in that same, uh, same category. And I wanna be clear in that regard, like, I'm an advocate for a codex, but, but we have to make some pretty critical decisions to figure out what's best for the game space and how we are uh, delivering our time and energy and resources into that game as well. So uh, a lot of this stuff right here, this codex area that says coming soon, uh, for any of those who's, who missed it, I think it was the last stream, uh, we talked a little bit about it. And um, as of right now, the plans for the codex are mostly to drop it. Okay, and I know that's not, it's painful to hear that because uh, nobody likes hearing things are going to be dropped. Uh, but rest assured, we're still looking at ways to tie in important quality of life features. For example, we have been getting some information regarding like uh, a mission chain where you have the text lines of the characters. You could accidentally skip it by pressing F, right? You could accidentally skip it and you're like, oh, shoot, I missed what he said. Can I go back and find that? Okay. We received good feedback on that. There may be a possibility, there is a chance that we will add in uh, into like the missions. I can't go here because I have a mission chain active that is not available to see yet. But we could have a mission chain show you the dialogue exchanges as well. This is something that we've been considering. Uh, it would be a lot of work. So we want to make sure that we still are facilitating that proper style of information regarding world war, regarding ease of access into missions, stuff like that. Uh, so do know, it's not like we're just, oh, screw it. We don't want to do this. Flip a table. That's no, no, no. There's a lot, there's a lot behind the scenes, under the hood stuff and conversations that we go through that really distinguishes why and why not uh, we are going in the directions we are. So rest assured, uh, our time is being spent in very intentional capacity. Um, and again, the Codex is just one of those things that is not getting a lot of love right now. It's not looking like it's going to get a lot of love, but uh, but we'll see what happens in the future. This could it's just the up. current state of where we are at internally uh, and managing those systems, adding those systems. One of those things.
Just like in the game that shall not be named, just be able to go back and dialogue is such quality of life stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we recognize that. We recognize that. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what we can do. I don't want to get either of these side missions right now. Um, I just want to go complete the one that we've got active. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> You think factions is important? Yeah, we do too. We have had some pretty healthy discussion about factions. Right now, the faction stuff is not implemented correctly. I said that in a very important degree. It's not implemented correctly. Uh, we will be revisiting faction system and we'll be talking about uh, your standing um, in the future. When we, ha when we have more to report, we will report it. Or replay cutscenes, maybe? Yeah, no, uh, we have the replay cutscene feature in Everspace 1. So, um, knock on wood, that should be something that comes back in Everspace 2. Grinding faction XP is really tiring. Yes, it is. I agree. Yeah, faction system, not done. We will readdress. We will, we will talk about new stuffs and different stuffs when there's new and different stuff to talk about. So yeah, don't, don't you worry too much about that. That's right. Get wrecked, nerds. All right, here we go. Ancient forces. Oof. The option to gain distance rather than meet head on. Ooh, a Union signal decoder. That'll be nice. I think I got all the turrets down with the uh, the virus, so that feels good. Shoot and loot a little bit. We got a rocket launcher. Yeah. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. No. Please go away. Thermo guns against the ancients, man. I, I feel like... I feel like when you have thermo gun, you're just prepared for the ancients, straight up. Um, this is so much easier to do in Everspace 2 than it was in Everspace 1, by the way. For a number of reasons. Uh, but... Uh, we are we are actually still adjusting the AI of the ancients as well. That's gonna be something that gets tweaked. Oil gun. He needs liquor. Ah, dang it. We'll hang on to that glow gun though, because at the very least we could give it for Alex. By the way, that's another uh, little quick detail note. Alex perk, one of his perks requires a glow gun. We will make that selectable so that you can choose which coil gun goes into the perk instead of it just randomly taking possibly, you know, your favorite coil gun that you're using directly as your primary weapon on your ship. That feels bad, man. That'll be fixed. Thermogun nerf foreshadowing? No, 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 no. Uh, more ancients getting buffed foreshadowing. Laser cannon thing kills them quicker? Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, I think thermogun's more about like, oh, they're gonna like teleport all over the place and you don't really wanna try very hard. Yeah, you know, thermogun's a great option. <laughs> Especially when you have your drones doing your dirty work. It's, I think a Paris ball with the, the Vindicator, personally. Fly, my lovelies! Do your work! And then you're just, like, sitting back eating a bag of Cheetos, just, you know. <laughs> Thermo gunning. Now here, however, um, this could prove to be interesting. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna... Annihilator virus this guy? This is fun. I like this little combo. We're gonna annihilator virus this, so all his drones are gonna pop and his armor is just gonna like vanish. I really enjoy that. 
there's a, a lot of effective little ways to take out drone carriers, but uh, it's just, that one feels dirty in a way that's like so satisfying. <laughs> Regarding early puzzles and completion percent, are things still getting plugged in as secret stashes, like the drill puzzle in that area, or are they going to be excluded? Um, I... not 100% sure. I'm gonna be honest, not 100% sure. I know that there are still other indicators that need to be uh, addressed regarding the 100% completion. Um, and there could be more types added, yes, for sure. <clears throat> but I don't know what that looks like at this time. Robin! Yes. Oh, I want to heal our heal our drones a little bit before we get too crazy again. All right. I also think it might be a good time to mention regarding drone healing and the wreckage that you find. Um, as of right now, uh, if I recall correctly, our numbers, if you have a drone slot open, when you gather wreckage, it adds a drone. Uh, if you have all your drones, it will repair one drone for 50% of its hold. I think that's where it's at right now. This could change. This could change, all right? Uh, in addition, we have recognized that you guys have said it'd be really nice when you dock in a base, you know, you repair your ship, you would also, I don't know, repair your drones or pay additional money to add drones while you're in a dock, right? We recognize that. I don't know if that's a direction we want to take the Vindicator, and I want to explain why, okay? Long story short, the Vindicator is a little bit more complicated than the other ships. We don't want any particular ship to have all of these unique intricacies, specific things that define it separately from other ships. Whew, intricacies, that's the word I'm looking for. Hard to say for some reason. With the Vindicator, if we're giving it way too many options to just like splurge back into its full powerhouse mode, then it's kind of making the other ships feel like they're missing something in that same slot. Like maybe when you dock, it's like, why can't I spend money to like supercharge the shield of a Sentinel or something like that? We would have to do something equivalent for all of the different ships because we want them to be equally unique, okay? So please, please know that we hear you when you're saying you would love to restore drones when you dock at a station. Yes, it makes sense from a realistic standpoint that you would dock and you'd restore all of them. Uh, completely get it, completely understand. We also are trying to ensure that the gamification of the Vindicator, how you have to go out and specifically get salvage to build your drones and to repair your drones uh, is still a mainstay of the ship itself. All of that said, we do have a couple other interesting ideas to help the Vindicator in that regard. All right, cool. <laughs> Future content, yay! But yeah, basically I just said we're listening, we like your ideas, we wanna make sure that it's all coming together accordingly, so you might see some additions to the game in ways that you maybe didn't expect, but should definitely serve a similar, if not better purpose for what you're trying to accomplish. All right. Uh, where's the data? On the other side, did we start on the wrong side? Oh, that's right. I was trying to destroy enemies to see if something would drop. We also need to watch our time because I want to talk about your screenshots and whatnot. Booster, okay. Ouch. So now we're going to hack the terminal. Initiating hacking sequence. You will need to remain close to the terminal until the firewall is broken. Got it. I feel like the Vindicator is like real good at these missions. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Please don't hurt my drones. Ouch. Right after saying that, I kind of deserve it, I guess. I'm going to try and repair. 
Don't want to get too far away. There we go. Good, good. We're not too far. Good. Oh, that's an elite. Man, we should have put a bunch of sticky turrets down. That would have made that way easier. Oh well. Now we need to go hack another terminal. We'll try and clean this mission up uh, as quickly as possible. Is that doing? Is that doing anything? No, it's not even good. Okay, it's worth a shot. Vindicator is pretty much Space Raccoon play style, getting stuff from garbage. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Been enjoying the gunship too much? Oh, man, yeah. The gunship, the damage output alone from the gunship. Oh. Definitely like it. The whole drone mechanic is really shaky to me. I hope that you let us know on the forums why that is. But yeah, there, there's still more stuff coming to the drones uh, on that front, so. So it's important for you to give us that feedback, because maybe, just maybe, we could see some of that. Drones are popping. Makes me sad. All right, time to your thing. Accessing this kind of network is a complicated process. But for the sake of human comprehension, I am willing to call this a thing from here on out. Do the thing. Don't know if I'm gonna. Oh, I am. All right, cool. I'm glad he wasn't further out. That could have been a little challenging since we don't have any boostables. We have a fairly aggressive build on this Vindicator. Should probably cycle something out for that. Now I think about it. Oh, another ship color! Yay! Harvest gold! Yes! You're gonna be a little too far out for me to hit. All right. Um, so try to get a little bit closer. Maybe this will get him. Maybe I hope. Yes. Yes. Good. 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 All right. I showed this last stream. I gotta do this again. So outlaw bomb thrower. The way you disable the shields is by hitting it with a large object, like like the barrel bombs, right? Uh, don't forget, your ship is a large object. Beautiful. Oh! 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 Yes! 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 That feels good. All right. Uh, heat detector, echo, canceler, ah, and more power units. Ooh. All right, all right, all right. We're getting close. We're getting closer. Let's just kind of like have a casual look. Uh, so what that means is whenever we uh, are looking at uh, the locations themselves, um, it will give you a percentage of completion. Um, and I think currently it's, yeah, so it's currently a bit bugged and how it's kind of like receiving data. What it's meant to do is show you the exact percentage of places that you've been. Um, this is gonna be refined over time. Um, in some cases on your current saves, in the current game, you actually have to trot, like travel back to a location and it'll give you the information. Um, but it'll start showing you like how much of the stuff that you have completed. For example, in Immaculate Redemption, we have completed 69% nice of this location's hidden secrets. 
<clears throat> and then whenever you have 100% completion, it'll show that in orange so that you know you never have to technically go back there for whatever reason if you don't want to, unless there's potentially the chance for uh, having a particular faction show up, particular resources show up, other reasons to go in that part of the territory itself. All right. <clears throat> Only detect one more server in the vicinity. Okay, let's get this over with. So that's how all that works. I'm still watching the time. We are going to show you some of your fan art and whatnot. I really want to finish this mission first. So this should be the last bit. Initiating the thing. Things I didn't expect in the stream. Look, look, okay. I, I follow the memes, okay? All right. All right. I'm cool. I'm hip. <laughs> when I say it, it sounds cool to whom? I feel like Hive is making fun of me right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that timing. <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? Yeah, basically. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. All right, good. Oh, oh my gosh, my poor little drone. Did you see me knock him sideways? That's fine. He's fine. He's got his own little lateral thrusters. He's good. Oh, that's not a good spot for that mag. Come on, my drones! Oof. All right. Oh man, these madcaps, you do not you do not want madcaps where your drones are at. Those oh those mines are just awful. Those mines are just absolutely savage. Alright, there we go. Almost done. All right, good. And we have some nice, healthy... No! That... Oh, that punk! Oh my gosh. The damage we took from that, our drones? Nasty. I, I was feeling so good about that. All right, our, our drones aren't that bad. That's fine. All right. We're going to grab this last little bit of wreckage over here to restore our fourth drone. Just like so. And now we are mostly at full health. That feels pretty good. Our armor sucks right now. That's fine. That's fine. But I think this is where we are going to go ahead and save the game. Our stream save just like that. We will return right here next time uh, whenever we are doing all the fun things. Uh, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to bounce over to our fan art section where we're looking at all the cool stuff that you guys have been cataloging accordingly because it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty awesome uh, what you guys are doing on your free time and ways that you are appreciating uh, what we're doing as well. So I need to move the camera over. Woo! All right. And then I need to make sure that I can see the fan art. Excellent. Oh, we are gaming. All right. So, uh, yeah, so let's get into this. Let's give some appreciation to you guys. Uh, cause first off, uh, feedback. Let's just, let's talk about feedback for a second. Feedback has been really good, really good. Especially right when we dropped the Kite Nebula, you guys were going ham, giving us all the problems. You still are, um, which is great. You're finding new issues, you're finding new <laughs> problems. And it's, that's great. Let us know. Cause we can't fix if we're not aware of it. That being said, we are aware of a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, also make sure when you're posting on the forums to use that search feature to see if somebody else has posted something similar, because sometimes we will get a lot of times, if, I, if I'm being completely honest, a lot of times we'll get repeat bug reports. Save yourself some time instead of writing up that two paragraph long thing that takes you 30 minutes because you're trying to fine tune it. Just use the search bar, discover that somebody else has mentioned the exact same thing. You know, it's all good. It's all good. 
Um, but otherwise, that's been huge. So thank you, keep doing that. It's awesome. Uh, we've had some interesting and unique suggestions that have also been pushing us forward. So thank you for those as well. Uh, Ashes of Helios, we have as a galactic photographer, he's been taking some super cool shots continually. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't, he does such a great job with his depth of field shots and explosion effects. And then he also drops stuff in like this. This is also Ashes of Helios. Uh, just nice, nice colorations going on and just like the symmetry factor, just bringing it all together makes makes me happy. It, ma it gives me the good tingles, you know what I'm saying? It's delightful. So good. So major shout out to Ashes of Helios. Keep doing what you're doing because it's working. You got you get a lot of upvotes uh, on your in the screenshot channel. It's uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, this next one, this next one, I I had to share because it's now their profile pic on Discord. It's the in the perfect circle uh, with Bivage. Uh, I love this shot so much, and how it's like a perfect that perfect circle that you have now as your your profile you, uh, profile pic and the Discord. Every time we see it, I'm just like, oh yeah, oh it's so great. That's, that's great. That's great. And it's also, I think this is your favorite ship. Is that right, Bavage? Pretty sure it is. Uh, you've been going ham, but man, just, just so, so great. Captures everything that you need about the striker. So good. We also have a, another one from Bavage as well. Um, this was his uh, toaster influenced <coughs> ship. Very much enjoy, uh, you know, including the references to Battlestar Galactica in our title as well. Uh, feels good, man. Feels good. I, I love what you've done. <clears throat> Spoon Knight says, I, I think I see what the thing to be teased is now. Do you? I haven't, I haven't even been teasing the thing that's going to be teased. I haven't said it. I haven't said a word. <clears throat> Pay no attention to the scrolling text below. All right. Uh, Cactus Eleven has also brought in uh, a photo or two. Um, who's been? I think they just started sharing. If I'm not mistaken, they just started sharing uh, varying photos in the Discord, and I think they've got some pretty solid start. Uh, some really nice ways to approach the uh, leading the eyes into their photography. This is something that I could see as like a, a thumbnail on a video. It's just like. Zarkov and the mysteries within, you know, something like that. Definitely, definitely pretty solid work on that front. Uh, but yeah, Cactus has been dropping a number of them. Uh, as most of these individuals here, I, I try to give praise to as many as I can. Um, and because that's because I love what you guys do. It's so good. It's so good. Next one. Uh, this one comes from C. Dutson. C. Dutson uh, streams the game. He's, he's kind of fun to watch. Uh, so definitely, man, I've given you a self-promotion, C. Dutson. Look at that. Holy crap. Streamer, you should go watch the streams because he's fun. He, he enjoys Everspace 2 a lot. Uh, it, it's great. And this is one of his photos. It's, I mean, long story short, I just, I grabbed this. I was like, yep, that's going in my desktop wallpaper. It's just, it's great. Solid. Perfect. Thank you. Beautiful. And he's got a couple other ones that he does that he likes that symmetry as well. He likes that symmetry as well. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, using the spatial bypass uh, to zip around. A fun angle to see. Christmas bonus, maybe? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are fun. All right, next up, we've got uh, Crispy Muffin, who's actually in the chat. I think you actually just got savaged by Nightbot. Oh my gosh. Nightbot's like, no, you can't do that. Oh, get a timeout for five seconds. Stop spamming words and phrases when he said, ooh, <laughs> too many O's. Get that out of here. But check this out. Look at that shot. At first glance, you're like, oh, it's just a nice environmental sort of setup. And then you start looking at the wispy clouds going around the corner. You're like, dang, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. I haven't quite seen something like that before. Just you see somebody like, I'm gonna try and land it, and just boom. Nope, failed. Uh, I dig this one all a freaking lot. That smoke trail is just mwah. Like it's it's like this cross between a very calm 
inviting screenshot and then like, oh no, all hell is breaking loose screenshot in the exact same shot. And the lighting is also very cleverly done. Um, yeah, really brings this one together quite well. Good framing, solid stuff. Mwah, chef's kiss. We have a number of other crispy muffins as well. Uh, this one, I feel like everyone can relate to. We have all been here, right? Every single one of us has been at this point in the game. You're like flying around, you got like, a, you know, all these enemies you're fighting, your health's super low. You're like, all right, well, I'm glad I got through that. And then you see the red beam of light and you're just thinking, oh, Schlotzky's Deli, not promoted. Oh, what what are we gonna do next? How do we get out of this situation? It's like, it's so tense and you're just, oh, you're just looking at this screenshot, you can feel the tension. How many more shots can this person take? I'll tell you how many, one, that's it. That's all you got, one last chance. If you don't dodge this laser, you're done. You know, oh my gosh. And uh, another really nice use of depth of field here. Um, oh, bring it all together, like just, whoo. You can just feel, oh, you can feel the stress in such a good way. Ah, oh, solid. And then here's his last one, uh, just showing a, a nice angle of flying through the clouds, um, has a more realistic sort of perspective going, you know, from the cockpit as well, uh, looking out at this particular angle. Um, another good use of framing, honestly. You have that solid contrast to the cockpit with the environmental effects. Uh, the nebula and if you look if you look at the star like the, the the bright spot in the clouds it actually kind of feels like the clouds are moving if you do it long enough like just just bear with just like stare at that light for 10 seconds and then just kind of like look around and it, it like the clouds they start oh gosh it feels like you're actually observe oh man i I'm glad to say from these three screenshots and a number of other ones that were incredibly well crafted that we are actually bringing Crispy Muffin into our Galactic Photographer role. So congratulations Galactic, or Crispy Muffin. You are our latest addition to the Galactic Photographers. Great shots. Uh, and if you want to see more by him, definitely go to our Discord, head on over to the screenshot channel because there is some real good stuff. Seriously, really solid content there. Uh, so next is, this is the one that I was kind of foreshadowing a little bit. This is Geometry Prime with the gunship. And it's the exploitable part right now of the gunship where he is using it. He's firing from all hard points. This is the pulse laser, uh, the, the synchro pulse, excuse me. This is the synchro pulse. And um, it's bugged right now to where it's firing at twice the rate uh, while also doing double damage. So... Um, generally speaking, because there's multiple hard points, it would already be firing at twice the rate, but then because there's, <laughs> because of the way that the coding works, it's, I think it's actually firing like four times the rate, expending four times as much energy in the process, but it's effectively doing four times as much damage as intended. So this is something that has been addressed, but look at how freaking fast it's firing. Like, that is absurd. <laughs> Definitely bugged, definitely getting fixed, but still looks freaking cool. And also for the record, since we know it's cool and it kind of feels good, we might find some sort of way to bring that back after fixing it, uh, but uh, that's that's a story for another time. Anyway, we've got a couple more from Geometry Prime. Uh, this one actually is the last one that I'm going to show from Geometry Prime. He also takes fantastic screenshots, uh, environmental, combat oriented, all sorts of things as well. Um, I'm a big fan of the, the color scheme of your ship. Very big fan of it. You're not trying to like make a statement, but you also look very official, right? Very much in line with sort of GMB colonial uh, sort of style of, of coloration. So that in and of itself, I dig. Great looking ship. And then you're like, check out the expansive location that I'm totally hanging out in. So good. So good. Trailing these GMB, probably as an escort, you're definitely not about to shoot them down and take all their loot. No, sir. I know that Geometry Prime is a good person. All right, Kazaa is up next and how he breaks our game. Um, I'm mad at you, Kazaa, but also thank you so much. We really do appreciate everything that you find 
uh, both in ways of natural game progression and also <clears throat> tweaking some things around, but no, it's awesome. Thank you for doing what you do. It is so great to see when everything goes wrong and how you stack it up against the player, uh, what truly happens. There is There are way too many ancients in this area. Way too many. That's all you need to know. This will be fixed. This will be fixed. Uh, we got some other ones from Kazat. Using the light sources as a means to like tell the story as well. Uh, this one over at Alkaline Station. Uh, you have the green light source, the orange light source, and then he just like positioned this battle, you know, with the green thermo gun in a green ship against an orange ancient firing orange thermo gun. Uh, and I think that comes together pretty well. That's nice. That's pretty clever. Well done. That required some setup. Still, well done. That's good. That's real good. Kazaa! <laughs> and we got one more from Kazaa. No, we got a couple more. Oh my gosh. I'm giving too much love to Kazaa now. Uh, this was just like a really standard environmental shot, and I just liked it. And uh, you've seen this one a billion times because it's so easy to take. Low hanging fruit. Get wrecked, Kazaa. That's right. Now I'm bad mouthing you for no reason whatsoever. It's a great shot. It really is. It's a great shot. Then we also have this one. Another nice use of coloration. Seriously, like. Oh gosh! I mean, just look at the look at those colors on the, uh, the doing the thing, and it's like the ah. Uh, uh. I like I like colors. I like colors a lot. Very nice. Very good use of colors there. Uh, so keep doing what you're doing because clearly it's working. Uh, we also have one from Medbed. One looking at Prescott Starbase. I think it's always interesting to see the different angles individuals choose to take of Prescott. And this one is a solid shot. We have a nice dynamic here of just seeing the scale of this place so much, but also seeing, you know, like the various advertisements uh, of Prescott and how they're trying to be alluring or they're trying to be, you know, uh, driven by hunger, whatever. Uh, it's, it's great captures a lot in such a simplified version of uh, Prescott Starbase in and of itself. So kudos to you. Good stuff. Next up, we've got another uh, medbed who's been uh, cracking. <laughs> ah! <clears throat> it's, a, it's a pun because there's a crack when you... with Whatever. Anyway, thought this one was neat. Thought this one was great. It's going to be very challenging to align the lightning effects in the game with a well-composed shot. And that one, like this, I, just, I love the way that one comes together. This is a, this is a great, great shot. All right. Love the color. Love how dark and mysterious and foreboding it is. I love how you can still see the details within the background elements. Like this, there's a, it, this is great. This is a great shot. This is a great shot. Bearded Frog says, stay cool, Eric. I know, man. Oh, gosh. I was having fun, all right? If you're not having fun, you're losing. That's how it, that's how it works, and I'm having fun. All right, next up, uh, another really clever shot. This one comes from Peter Snail. Uh, Peter Snail hasn't taken a lot of photos, but I saw this one. I was just like, dang! Mm, oh, my gosh! This one is telling a story. Oh, wow. That is... Whew! I like, I like this a lot. I like this a ton. Cause you can immediately tell where they're at. You can't quite tell what they're doing, but you can also see what type of ship they have. I mean, that's, that's just kudos. If we're being honest, that's just kudos to our level designing. That's our, you know, our, our ship modeling. So that's Alex, uh, that's gonna be Matthias. Uh, a couple other members, you know, have their hands and play their roles, of course, uh, in all of this, but like, bringing that home oh my gosh the way that you take the angles of this shot like gosh dang that's good i love that and it also helps us know that our silhouette process is working as intended so good good on us uh we have one from premium nose here which just he does like these widescreen landscape style uh, photos which i adore oh so good and this one showing nefty's planes it gives you a great sense of scale 
of how this all is coming together. You know, you just got this tiny little base, but when you're there, it feels like, oh man, it's kind of big. But man, like zooming out, recognize there's other locations around and just like, it's, it gets so big so fast. So, so wide so fast. You're right, Crispy Muffin. Oh my gosh. But, um, but yeah, definitely a shout out to uh, Premium Nose for that. Cause every time he just makes me see just how large some of these environments are. Uh, just kind of mind blowing. All right, next up, we got several from Silvet. Silvet seems to be a little bit newer at photography, but we got to give him some pretty good kudos because I like what I'm seeing. We got this standard style of shot of a Vanguard leaving the, the home base, and it already wants to tell a story like, where are we going? What are we doing? Um, you know, it's also kind of a similar visual that you see in most of the game, but the depth of field definitely plays a role here. I like the use of focusing in on the ship so you can see those little details. I love this engine type on the small ships, on the light ship models, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but it definitely comes across quite nicely. Um, we also have this one where he's venturing into the depths of Prescott Starbase. Kind of looks like the Death Star um, in Return of the Jedi, I am now realizing, oh my gosh, I'm not a dork, you're a dork. Uh, but no, I dig that a lot. Really like the way that it's, you know, the, again, the use of colors. I could talk about colors all freaking day. I love colors. It's great. Definitely dig how your ship is flying on in. You're just going ham. So good. You're going to get sued. I don't think you understand how suing works. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another shot, more environmental, <laughs> more environmental shot. Um, I love how he toned down the lighting here. Oh my gosh. So you have a, a very thematic, very stylistic uh, choice of shot here of seeing these resources, uh, seeing this environment, uh, you know, the asteroid belt really close to the start. Um, man. I just, I love how it all comes together. I love how it all comes together. I, I dig shots like this, mostly because it's filling up my desktop wallpaper. Uh, I have, I have like almost half a terabyte of screenshots from you guys saved on my desktop. <laughs> uh, I gotta go through that and kind of clean it up a little bit. Anyway, <clears throat> it's a, it's massive. It's also because a lot of these are high res, okay? So in fairness, all right. Um, this one I thought was also a really nice, a clever shot from Sylvan as well. Just getting that detail of a scan going on a cargo drone. Um, not many people have seen this before, but the scan actually has four different scanning lines. It's not just one big old B. How neat is that? How neat is that? You can also see more of like the details, like kind of a, a almost like a chip-like style, like a, a motherboard on the underside of here. Yeah, we got our labelings and some such and all the things. Uh, while we also have something sort of interesting going on in the background with the player ship uh, and the outlaw fighter. Uh, just a nice, nice detailed shot there coming together as well. I really like that detail. I really like that detail. So good. Um, I am running over time, so I'm going to start trying to crack through the rest of these. Um, this one comes from Stinseth. Uh, he started just taking some photos as well. Uh, this one he actually named the one who knocks. Uh, I like it. I like it. It's pretty effective, pretty solid stuff. You can actually see two missiles in this screenshot. One that's showing up right there, right where my mouse is doing the mouse thing. And then the other one obviously in the lower left. Facing a bomber when it's bombing you. Uh, yeah, that's uh, whoo. You're dead in five seconds sort of experience there. It's pretty great pretty great. We've also got this other one he's taken. Uh, I think he said, I just love the explosions. Uh, also, uh, this one is in a gunship, so I'm guessing he just likes the heavies, uh, but still comes together really nice. Uh, different colors in the explosion being captured as he's bringing it down, probably in a high-risk location, my guess. I love how battle-hardened this combat was as well. I've seen all the, uh, the shots fired, just scattered amid the I guess you could call this a carcass now. It's definitely not operating. Um, but yeah, I just I love I love the everything that's coming together in this photo too. Good, good stuff. 
super great. We also have uh, the Chemical Bro who also takes some screenshots. Now I can't 100% tell if this one was doctored or not. Chemical Bro's very good about doctoring his photos. I don't know if this is a straight screenshot that's just been adjusted a little bit or if this was doctored up, but either way, uh, wow. Wow, like beautiful, so great. So great. I love how spaced out the drones are in regards to where the uh, Vindicator is. And I love the comp, like the, the general framing here. When I say framings, like think about the frame of like a window or something, right? Uh, like the, the way that it's bordered here. <clears throat> and then we've got this leading line that comes right through it and this planet that just wants to, oh, just wants to reach out, touch the stars. Everything about this, it just, it feels so inviting. I want to go into space and see this. Really like that. Really like the way this comes together. So next up, we're going to run through our fan art very briefly because uh, we are straight up out of time. Um, so let's just go through this very quick. Deshra, who's been playing around with these like uh, constructible little uh, plastic pieces of like a, a I, I forgot the name. It's like snap ships or something. Either way, uh, I've been recreating ships inside of Everspace 2. And this one is the Vanguard. They did a, a nice job in recreating that using all these little uh, pieces to connect together. Uh, really, really cool. And then they also ended up doing the Vindicator itself. So this is the backside of the Vindicator uh, with all the engines. And then also the front and side-ish of the Vindicator as well uh, to see the wings coming out. Still the Ford swept wings coming together. Oh my gosh. Really, really good. Yeah, bonus minutes in the stream. My wife is gonna come down, open up this door, and I'm gonna get murdered live. It's gonna be awesome. But in the meantime, we're just gonna show the rest of these little details. I also had to share this meme from Hydraxon. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. Alec, my job here is done. Adam, but you didn't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's way too accurate. It's way too accurate. Oh my gosh. Thank you for that, Hydraxon. Very, very good. <laughs> next up, we have the Chemical Bro. The next three are the Chemical Bro because he does a lot of fan art. This one, he made a little poster for the Vindicator itself. Um, he also played around with this as like a movie poster as well in the movie theater. So that was also really neat to see. Well done, the Chemical Bro. Fantastic work, as always love the way that you're approaching your shots and cleaning things up uh, and the next one he was honoring deshra who pu puts the little miniature pieces together we got two to show so this is the first one this was the interceptor take that deshra had <clears throat> excuse me and chemical bro plugged it in of course into the game itself and adds a couple little nuances and subtleties around uh nothing super crazy but you know it's the deshra version of the interceptor uh it's fan art in the freelancer hangar little details like that um, chemical bro has a lot of fun with that so thank you uh, for having that sort of cross collab can you call it a collab if Deshra probably didn't ask for you to do this still it's awesome it's great it's fun and then finally we have we have the uh this is actually one that we just showed the vanguard the rear of the vanguard flying into outer space as well uh Deshra's ship so really really good stuff so guys i've gone over time normally at this point i'm like gonna try to answer questions and stuff i've got no time so if I missed any questions for you guys, which I probably did, it happens. I get real excited. Um, if I missed any questions, by all means, you should head on over to the sites where you can uh, plug in those questions so that we can talk to you. The big one is going to be our Discord. Over on the Discord, we have a means to, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a means to uh, directly respond to you in our Ask Dev Questions channel you drop something in there, a community member who knows the answer will respond. Uh, if they respond incorrectly, they'll be corrected by me or another member from the dev team or the community team, and we'll make sure that you are all taken care of, all right? Otherwise, Instagram is a great place to see a lot of your collected beauties, your screenshots, because we love sharing what you guys have been up to. If you want one of your screenshots shared on our social media, we'll, we'll get to it. A lot of these individuals that we've been highlighting through the course of these streams, whenever we do these community little showcases, you could even show up in like a thumbnail art piece 
you could show up in, in our marketing a little bit in the future. Like you guys, the stuff that you're doing, how neat is that? So get on that, it should be awesome. Otherwise, all those other places you can do things and stuff and whatever, I don't know, whatever. It's all there. Follow us, you know, smash that like button, whatever. All those things, all the things. In the meantime, I'm just gonna stare at this beautiful uh, imagery right here because I love these colors so much. It just makes me happy inside. Um, you have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. And we will catch you in the next stream two weeks from now because we are out next week. No stream next week. So two weeks from now, we'll have a next look into what we've been working on. All right, toodles. And no cheeky statements after the stream for me because I am super late. <laughs>